Oh, hello, I didn't see you there. My name is Colby Carter, Math Specialist for Tennessee Adult Education. We have created a new Tennessee Adult Education Mathematics Curriculum Map, or TAMICUM for short. If you are a Tennessee Adult Ed Math Instructor looking for someone to guide you through this exciting journey of planning math instruction using this map, well, you've come to the right place. Join me, Colby Carter, on this math-tastic adventure. This is where the magic happens. And by magic, of course, I mean using my Tennessee Adult Education Mathematics Curriculum Map. Using this map to thoughtfully plan your class time will help you succeed as an instructor in adult education. Now, let's look at the different aspects of this map and the support pieces that go with it. The math lesson plan template, which guides us through the elements of a lesson. The map itself, which is the scope and sequence of topics and objectives to teach for each level. The standards, which correspond to each lesson. The crosswalk, which connects specific resources to each lesson. All of these together make planning lessons easy. Let's talk a bit more about the math lesson plan template. Again, this is a guide. It's for you. You don't have to fill it out completely or be super detailed. Personally, I use the template to make sure I include all the important elements of a lesson and outline some quick notes. Let's get started planning a lesson. I'm going to start outlining the lesson in a new lesson plan template. First, we need to identify what the objectives and standards are for this lesson. The map indicates that the lesson I am on is this one. Plot points involving all four quadrants and multiply and divide integers. I'm just going to call this fun with integers. Now, if I go back to my map, I can find the level that I'm teaching here on the map. And in this case, the level I'm teaching is four. I can also get the standards that I'm teaching from the map here. And in this case, the standards that I am teaching are six NS eight and seven NS two. Last, I can get the objective for the lesson I am teaching here on my map, which is plotting points and multiplying and dividing integers. Now, was that too much? Did we say it okay? My handwriting is terrible. Did you see how bad my handwriting is? Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to be leaving these boxes up here blank. Where can I find the actual standards language? Boom right here in the section of the map with all the standards listed. I find the lesson I'm teaching, which is level 4.1, lesson two, here. Notice the map also has foundational standards for your lesson and level five, six standards for your lesson. On the standards document, the main standards are in bold and the foundational standards are in italics. And the level five, six standards, if there are any, are in red, like in lesson four. So now that I've read through the objectives and standards, I've got an idea of what this lesson is about. Next is to plan the introduction. Besides doing a fun attention grabber, I can use the introduction to quickly review previous concepts as needed. I need to think back on the last lesson. Overall, it went well, but I wasn't able to fully explain the concept of subtracting two negative integers. I will need to work that into this lesson, so I'll note this in the introduction box of the lesson plan template. I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, so I'll need to be sure to check in with students regarding this concept during independent time to make sure they understood it. Now that I've thought through the lesson objectives and planned part of my introduction, I next will go to the resources crosswalk and determine what materials I will use. I next will go to the resources crosswalk and determine what materials I will use. <laughs> <laughs> I have one job! <laughs> I next will go to the resources crosswalk in the map and determine what materials I will use. For the most part, you should use the resources listed in the resources crosswalk. Since I am teaching level 4.1 lesson 2, 
I need to find that lesson in the crosswalk. One of the resources listed here is the High School Equivalency Basics Math Book, which is perfect because that book has never let me down. High School Equivalency Basics, or HSC Basics, usually serves as the foundation of my teaching of Level 4 students. The crosswalk shows that for this specific lesson, I can go to HSC Basics Math Book, pages 118 through 129. My students can refer to these pages as I teach, but that doesn't mean I'm just teaching word for word from the book. For example, the explanations and examples in the book are good, but they may not be enough or they may not be needed at all. I need to be flexible depending on what my students need. For this lesson, I will use some of the questions on page 123 for guided practice. I'm going to make a quick note in my lesson plan template of this. Another great thing about HSC Basics is that it has lesson plans provided in the instructor resource binder. I'm going to take a quick look at the lesson plan provided in the binder that corresponds to the lesson I am about to teach. From this lesson, I think that I will borrow the vocab right here, make a quick note of that in my lesson plan template. I also really like the math link piece right here. So I'm also going to make a note of that in my lesson plan template. Now, we need to refer back to the resources crosswalk to see what other resources are listed. For lesson two, an additional source that is listed is number power algebra. So, for number power algebra, the crosswalk indicates that I would find pages 18 through 21 and pages 108 through 110 useful. These will be good for independent time. I'm going to add this to my lesson plan. Even though they are not listed for this lesson, pages 22 and 23 have integer word problems, which will be a main part of the next lesson. So if I have any advanced students who finish early, I have the option of giving them these to work on. Again, I will note this in my lesson plan template. Now, the crosswalk also mentioned that I would find pages 108 through 110 useful. Looking at these, I noticed these also contain lots of good practice problems. I will actually use these as homework for my lesson. I will make a note of this in my lesson plan template. Now, sometimes in this hectic world of adult education, I may be tempted to just create packets or worksheets from these books, pass them out to my students, and tell them to get to work. This may be the easy thing to do, but it's not good teaching. We are the teachers. These resources are tools. There has to be a balance between direct, teacher-led instruction and independent work time. All right, we're rocking and rolling now. As I begin planning the details of this lesson, I need to think about my students, so I'll pull out my class roster. What's the next line? I can't, why couldn't I get that line? In this class, Janet, Glenda, and Cynthia are my math wizards. They aren't too far away from being ready to take the high set. I need to give them some high set specific practice during the independent work time. Okay, Yvette, another one of my star students, recently took the high set official practice test and she scored well enough to go take the actual high set. I need to talk to her either during independent time or at the end of the class to tell her how well she did and help her get started on signing up for the test. I'll make a note of that so I don't forget. It's very important that I allow a good portion of time for students to work on the specific concepts they need. Adult ed classes cannot be one size fits all, where the teacher and all of the students are always working on the same thing. We cannot waste our students' time. To close the lesson, I do a quick summary of the day's concepts, then give an exit ticket or a brief formative assessment to the students. This is a final check for me to verify their comprehension. I have filled out most of the lesson plan template. Notice that I pretty much made an outline using bullet points. I didn't have a lot of time to be extremely detailed, so I also didn't fill out most of this top part. However, if I did have more time or wanted to be more detailed so I could refer to this plan again in the future or share it with other instructors, I can do that. To reiterate, this lesson plan template is just a tool. You can use it however you want but it's definitely a good idea to at least have some kind of plan sketched out. As the great philosopher Beyonce is believed to have once said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Good stuff. I'm done. All right.
time to teach. So now that I've read, you ready? At any given level, at any given level, worst case scenario, if Jason doesn't like something, we have to re-record a piece. Or the whole thing. Does that work? Yeah, we have to set it up again. I want to do it again. But with proper planning using the map, Okay. And that's when I look up. I don't know what that motion is. Coming from the, you're gonna pop it from there. Really? Where can I find the actual standard language? I kind of put my was in the way. Where can I find the actual standards language? This looks so pretty. Besides doing a fun attention grabber, I don't know what that was. I will need to work that into this next lesson. So I'll note this in the introduction box. We don't want to say next lesson though, do we? Because that makes it sound like it's the lesson after the one I'm planning. I will need to work that into the next lesson. Aha! Exactly. Yeah. You ready? Know okay. You ready? We're not. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Can you hear it? High five! This looks so professional. Oh, Did you get it? No. Try it again. Okay. And that corrects it? Yeah. You okay with that, Jay? I'm sorry that I flubbed How dare line. you? I didn't say that good. High school equivalency. Let's see. And then I was advertising the book. Let me that out a shot. I'll pretend I'll pretend I'm writing. I can I can pretend. I learned that when I was in kindergarten.